What's going on YouTube? It's Particle Games, and I'm here with my first tutorial on how to make a space background in GIMP. And this is a pretty cool background that you can make. What we're going to make is this right here. You could use it as your desktop background. That's what I had it for. Uh, that's what I was using this for for a while. Or maybe if you're making a shoot 'em up game, like I was one time, I just made this scrolling background right here. You can make this with this sort of method. So it's it's pretty useful and just all around fun, I guess. So let's get started. Mm, I have a lot of these open. One sec. Oh. Okay. And I also recommend watching this in uh, the full screen YouTube player because I'm recording my full screen right now because this is a pretty big image to make. So I'd recommend the highest quality and full screen. So first you should create an image about, I'm going to create it my um, desktop size, I think it's about 1680 by 1050, I think it's something like that, but it doesn't really matter. Just try and make it your desktop size if you're making a desktop background or whatever size you need it for. So first, click on your background layer and just fill it with the black, and because space is black, so you probably want it to be black for your background. So, for the next layer, you're going to want to name it just stars, because space has stars. So on this layer, go to filters, render, oh, I'm sorry, no, you want to go to noise, hurl. It's not a very nice name, it sounds kind of nasty. But just click OK, about, well actually, if you want more dense stars, you can go a little higher or a little lower if you want less, but I like around 55 is good. And then you're going to want to change the color of the stars because green and pink and blue stars look kind of yucky. So go to colors, desaturate, and that basically just takes all the color out of the stars. And I, li I like to go luminosity just because it sounds cooler than lightness. And then obviously the stars look way too dense, so you're going to want to change that. So go to colors then to levels and you can also um, adjust the density of your stars here but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to this black arrow right here under input levels and move it more to the right and as you can see it's getting less and less dense and I'm going to go about right mm, right a little a little more dense about there that, that looks pretty good and hit OK. So there's your stars. But the stars look kind of boring. I mean, there's no shine or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some sparkle stars. So create a new layer and name it sparkle stars. Or a cooler name than that if you can think of anything. And then you're going to want to go to filters, noise, and hurl again. And then hit OK. Then once again go to colors, desaturate, luminosity okay and then once again back to colors and levels and you're gonna wanna make this well first you should hide your other stars layer so that doesn't get in the way of uh, your view of the actual layer and you're gonna wanna make go your excuse me you're gonna wanna make this one um, pretty sparse because if you have a lot of stars that are sparkling it looks pretty filled and it doesn't look as good so about there. It's, I don't. I don't even know if you can see this, but there's only it's only a few stars. I'm gonna even move it up a little more. There. And so these still aren't sparkling. So what you have to do is you have to go into filters, light and shadow, and then sparkle. And you can change the flare intensity. I like to go about maybe 0.3, and hit OK and it takes a little while some of these filters like this one let's just wait for it to get done any second now almost there and there we go so you have some of your stars now are sparkling and if you turn back on this layer it looks pretty good doesn't it you got some stars that are sparkling some stars that are smaller than others so it looks pretty good but you don't just want like a star field with no color or anything else. You kind of want maybe 
like a planet or a supernova and we're gonna do both of those so first create a new layer and title it supernova or whatever you want so you can recognize it and then go to filters light and shadow and supernova pretty handy isn't it and be sure to click preview because it makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing and then click anywhere on your image right up here on where you want your supernova to be. I'm gonna put mine right uh, maybe right there. No, no, right there. There we go. Now we're talking. And you can change the radius, the spokes, and the random hue to whatever you want. You can see the preview right there. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Maybe change that up a bit. And that looks pretty good. I like that. And there we go. There's my supernova. And actually, I'm going to move that up a bit. Maybe filters, reshow supernova. I'm going to put it right there. There we go. That looks good. And so there you go. You got yourself a supernova. Pretty easy, huh? And now you're going to want to create the planet because if your space scene doesn't have a planet, it's not going to look at all as good as it could be. So rename. Actually, you don't need to create a new layer. I'm sorry. You, what you do need to do is create a new image to create your planet in. You really want this image to be huge. I'm going to make mine 1,000 by 1,000. I'm going to make this full screen here. So first what you need to do is you need to create the texture of the planet. I'm going to create kind of a rocky texture, but what you could also do is you could download um, a, like a rocky texture off the internet, but I'm going to create my own for the sake of this tutorial. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Filters, Render, Clouds, Solid Noise, and make the X and Y size 4 and 4 and the detail 15, and hit OK. And wait for it to finish, because the filters always take a while, and there you go. And now we're going to, we're going to need to fix up this render a bit here. So go to Filters, Enhance, Unsharp Mask, and set the settings to about what I have, 5, 3.5, and 0, and hit OK. Then we need to make this a little more 3D. So go to Filters, Distorts, Emboss, and make sure the function is on Bump Map, and then set the settings to what I have, 94, 47, 15, and hit OK. I'll wait for it to finish once again, and there you go. This is almost complete. It's looking pretty good, the texture here. But first, we need to change the colors a bit. So go to Colors, Brightness Contrast, and bring down the contrast to about negative 60. There we go. I always like to bring it down because it makes the colors blend a little more. And then hit OK. Now we need to actually colorize it, so go to Colors and Colorize. And change the hue down to like an orangey brown about there and you don't want it that saturated so right there and just bring the lightness down to about right there and that's a pr pretty good looking texture so hit OK and so now that our texture is done we're gonna wanna make it actually look like a planet so you go to filters then light and shadow and apply lens and make sure it's set surroundings to background color and make the lens refraction index about 1.2 or 1. Point, uh, maybe 1.3 and apply and there now we got ourselves a pretty nice looking planet but we don't what we don't want is we don't want this white background right here so right click on your layer and add an alpha channel then click on the select by color tool and click on the white and then hit delete on your keyboard and select none. And what we just did here is we just added the alpha channel and deleted the white background. So this right here now is transparent. And so now we're done with our planet. So go to File, Save As, Planet.pin, and save it to wherever you want. I'm just saving it on my desktop. And then hit Save. And so we're done with this. So we can close out of that. And, oh, OK. So now open back up your space backgrounds, then go to File, Open as Layers, Planet.Ping, 
and oh, we forgot something, but that's okay. We can just open this back up. So uh, hit delete and delete this layer here. Go to file, open, planet that thing, and here it is. So what we forgot to do is we forgot to add a shadow because without a shadow, it actually looks pretty lousy, and you'd rather not have a planet than uh not. If you're not going to have a shadow, you shouldn't even have a planet in the first place. So create a new layer, entitle it Shadow, and click back on your background layer, right click, and then Alpha to Selection. And what we just did here is selected the whole planet, basically. And so now go to the Paint Bucket tool, back in the Shadow layer, and click inside the selection, and fill it with black. And so that's going to be our shadow. Then go to Select, None and layer, scale layer, and you're going to want to bump up your layer size by about um, about 50%, and then hit scale. And now what we want to do is we need to blur it, because if it wasn't blurred at all, it would be a very boring shadow, I guess you could say. Let's go to filters, blur, and Gaussian blur, and make it about a quarter of the image size, I like to do uh, 300 if I have a thousand. Then hit OK, and I do know that 300 isn't a quarter, by the way. And try and align your shadow up with the corner of your images right here. You can also go here, but then what you get is this line right here, and that doesn't look very good. So go about there, and there, there's your planet. 